Hello and welcome along to the Property Academy Podcast by Opus Partners. I'm your host, Stephen Knight. And I'm Andrew Nichol. And today on the show, we're talking about interest rate cuts. And stick around for the next 15 minutes because you are going to learn how far banks are secretly cutting interest rates behind the scenes. You're going to learn which rates the banks are cutting and which ones are pretty much not moving at all. And we're also going to talk about how much banks are splashing out in terms of cash. So when you take out a mortgage, how much cash are they going to give you? Now, Andrew, how fast are interest rate ch- rates changing at the moment? Oh, this year's been wild. And actually, a lot of investors that I've been talking to, it's just, I think there's a sigh of relief in the market because we've been topping up rental properties for quite a long time now to quite an extensive amount for a lot of people. But the mortgage rates have tumbled again last month. And the six month rate, for example, fell 0.34%. There's a lot in a single month, 0.34%. But, yeah, a third of a percent in, in a month. Yeah, That's congratulations, a you can understand that. <laughs> <laughs> the, one, the one year rate. Almost 40%. Not 40%. Oh, sorry, sorry, 0.4%. sorry. 0.4%. I can't understand crabs, can I? <laughs> um, the one year rate down 0.39%. And what's fascinating is that over the last 30 days, kind of mid-October to mid-November, what we've seen is that the pace of the cuts picked up. So if I take you back to August, we saw some really significant cuts. They were a bit slower in September, early October. Like the six-month rate only fell about 0.08%, you know, um, 60 days ago. Now, over the last 30 days, it's it's gone down over a third of a percent. What's really fascinating, though, is if we think about which rates are being cut, the four-year and the five-year rate didn't move at all over the last 30 days. And even the two and three year rates, they're down less than 0.05 of a percent. So if we think about which cuts or which interest rates are really being cut at the moment, it is the shorter term rates, the six month, the one year and the 18 month rates. Those longer term rates are just sticking where they are. And uh, the specific rates we're talking about in this section of the podcast are the negotiated rates, right? Because if you go online and find out what BNZ or Westpac are advertising, you, that's not necessarily what you're going to pay. Yeah, correct. So so banks will have what they call the carded interest rate or the advertised interest rate, which might be, you know, it might be 5.99%. But if you go in and you actually negotiate a deal at the moment, and, you know, sometimes you've got to meet certain criteria, i.e. your LVR needs to be a certain level or under 80%, for example, then they're going to, the banks are willing to give further discounts. Yeah, and it's been in the past quite difficult to see what those kind of discounted rates are, which is why we've started publishing them, uh, publishing these rates ourselves. Of course, we can because we've got Opus Mortgages, which is a mortgage brokerage, so we see what interest rates Kiwis are actually paying. Now, what's interesting is these longer-term rates, the kind of three, four, five-year, they're typically higher than the shorter-term rates, like the six-month or one-year, right? But at the moment, it is actually the opposite and has been for a while. The shorter term rates, the six month, one year, 18 month, have been and still are higher than those longer term rates. So at the moment, if we look at the average advertised three year rate, the average bank is advertising 5.67% for a three year interest rate. But the one year is, you know, roughly 0.3% higher at 5.96%. So what we're tending to see with these shorter term interest rate drops and the long term rates staying the same, I'm seeing it revert back to that long term trend. Mm. So in terms of what I think is going to happen next, it seems like those three, four, five year rates, longer term rates will probably stick around where they are and we'll see those shorter term rates come down to being lower than kind of 5.6% 5.6% is what I'd expect. And how often are we publishing these negotiated rates from, from the likes of Opus Mortgages? Oh, we do it every single month. So oh, right. uh, our colleague Peter Norris writes a, an interest rate report that we send out kind of in the middle of the month. Because obviously getting the advertised rates, that's relatively easy. We have those available every single day and that's updated every single day. But these are these we have to actually have to look at actual files and see what actual investors or purchasers are getting each month. And that leads to a great question of, well, how much can you negotiate off the off the rate? So what are we seeing at the moment, say, for the one-year, Andrew? So one-year rate, at the moment, you might get an advertised rate of 5.96, but a negotiated rate of 5.76, so a 0.2% discount off the advertised rate. Yeah. Pretty and, big discount. Yeah, it's pretty good. But what's interesting is those discounts are primarily now just on the one-year and 18-month rate. So if I took you back, when we talked about this a couple of months ago, 
The average discount was probably 0.4% or just over for the one-year rate. We were seeing some quite significant discounts. And the reason was because we'd seen bank funding costs decrease quite quickly, but it was so volatile. We were like, the banks were probably thinking, oh, do we want to lower right now? Let's just give people some discounts. And then once we've got some confidence that our bank funding costs are lower, then actually, yes, yeah, sweet, we can start to low, lower those those retail interest rates down. Yeah, and that's where it's really interesting. You see that the the, the discounts can be quite extreme sometimes when, when you do see those sudden drops and the banks want to uh, uh, pass on some discounts to people to, to attract more business, but they don't want to commit to advertising them at that lower rate. Yeah, so if we think about that question we posed at the start, how much discount can you get and how much are banks secretly lowering, lowering their rates in the background? Uh, it's the one year and the 18 month that are being discounted. Average discount is 0.2%. Uh, and the two year rate is the least discounted at like 0.05 of a percent. I, I just want to give my usual disclaimer, which is don't walk into your bank <laughs> and say, with this chart, Edit Andrew said I could negotiate an average of 0.2% off. So I want 0.2% off, please. So, for example, if we look at, and I'll pull up the graph for you, Andrew, so that you can see it. If we look at the interest rates that people, uh, that different banks are charging at the moment, we know that Kiwi Bank has the lowest one year rate at the time we're recording this. Of course, it could change tomorrow. So everybody is charging 5.99% except for Kiwi Bank, which is 5.79%, and TSB, which is 5.69%. So because of that, I couldn't walk into TSB and say, give me. 20 basis points, 0.2% off your one year rate, please. Give me 5.49%. They're already the lowest in the market, so you're not going to be able to get that big discount. Whereas if you think about um, ASB, well, I'd be pretty confident that I could get a bit of a larger discount because they're at 5.99%. And I know that if Kiwi Bank's doing 5.79, you can probably match it. So that's how you'd use this data. Um, I would never use this to try and say, these guys said something on the internet, uh, uh, ASB, <laughs> um, sharpen your pencil, please. Now, the other big question is, how low will banks actually go? So what I also like to do is look at, well, what interest rates, or what is the lowest interest rate that any of our investors have got over the last 30 days from the different banks? And what's fascinating is that one year rate, Andrew, yeah, one year rate, 5.59. Very, very, very cheap. Um, there is still cheaper interest rates. Doesn't necessarily mean that's the one you should go for. So cheapest isn't always the best for you. The cheapest rate that anyone's getting at the moment is two or three years at 5.5%. And what's interesting is how these have changed over the last 30 days again. So if I showed you these numbers a month ago, the cheapest one year rate anybody had got in the market was 6.09%. So we've seen a half a percent drop in the lowest possible rate in the market. Pretty significant. You know, what's interesting though, the three-year, four-year, and five-year lowest rates in the market have actually crept up a little mm. bit. So the average for the three-year rate still came down a teensy little bit, but the lowest rate in the market crept up by a, a small amount, 0.01%. But what's interesting here is it, it kind of uh, backs up that idea I shared before of I don't think the four and five year rates are going to move much. No, I don't, uh, normally you, you see that um, uh, pen, that seesaw sw uh, swing the other way and then it goes back and forth. That tends to be how it works. It's just amazing looking at these now, just thinking it was only kind of six months ago, everything had a seven in front of it pretty much. Yeah, so even, and I mean, this is my favourite part of, of our website. Oh, you, you know, say that about all your parts. Do you know, I actually started, I, I worked on this. I woke up, uh, I think it was on Christmas Eve, after yeah. all of our <laughs> shenanigans last yeah. year, you know, yeah. like yeah. Oprah's Christmas party, all of that. And I was like, what, do I, what am I going to do with myself? <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. So I sat down and I literally worked on on this data. As a wee Christmas present to yourself. Yeah. Where we, By we, yourself. Well, where we started looking at, well, what were the rates at the start of the year? And we publish this every single day. And I love to say at the start of the year, January 1st, what was the ANZ's one-year rate, largest bank in New Zealand? It was 7.39. And we have had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cuts so far this year, down to 5.99%, which is about 1.4%. I'd expect with TSB and Kiwi Bank being more competitive, you might see another cut 
as we get closer to the next OCR mm. announcement, mm. which is at the end of November, if we see a 0.5% OCR cut, you might start to see some of that flow through as well. And interesting you mentioned that. So um, of the investors I've spoken to in the last couple of weeks, everyone is waiting for that next OCR announcement. So I had an investor yesterday, he's got about $5 million worth of debt on floating at the moment, and he's not fixing any of it until the next OCR announcement. We're seeing a little bit more of that. I actually had my mortgage advisor say to me, okay, Ed, we've got some rates for you, but the OCR is in three days. Why don't you just hold off for two weeks and fix it once they've made the announcement and maybe the banks start to cut their rates a little bit as well, uh, which meant that I got a lower rate overall. One thing I'll just say is when you look at or hear us talk about these are the lowest rates in the market, just be very aware that these will all be at different banks, right? So again, don't print this off. We'll take a screenshot of our yeah. YouTube video and say, well, Ed and Andrew said the lowest rate in the market is 5.5% for a two-year rate because uh, I don't have the bank in front of me. I could find it, but that might be at just one specific bank. Maybe not every bank is matching that, but it gives you an idea of what is the lowest in the market. Also, um, sometimes banks will buy business. So for example, if you've got, again, this guy had $5 million worth of debt, they're could be a bank out there that says, you know what, if you want to fix for two years, we'll give you 5.5%. But if Ed and I walk in and we've got a half a million dollar mortgage, they might not be willing to do that. Uh, and then the other big question is, well, are banks more willing or less willing to lend us money compared to a month ago? Is it easy to get a mortgage or is it harder? What are we seeing in the data? So according to Tony Alexander's mortgage survey, in October, there was a net 34% of mortgage advisors saying it's easier to get money out of the banks at the moment. And a big part of this is the triple CFA changes, but more importantly, probably at the moment, is those servicing test rates coming down. So what the bank is going to assess your loan at, it's probably gone from a 9% to an 8% on average. It is now easier to pass that servicing test when you're applying for a loan. The other thing that's important to really understand is the actual question that he asks mortgage advisors for the survey, which is, are lenders more willing to advance funds than a month ago. Now, if we look at last month, which was September, 57% uh, or a net 57% of mortgage advisors said, oh yeah, it's way easier. It's so easy at the moment. And if you say, well, still a net 34% of mortgage advisors are saying that in October, it was even easier than September. So you say, oh, September was bloody easy. Banks leading lots. In October, some people are saying, Oh, it's even easier than September. Yeah, and so, so you've it, got to really understand the question that's being asked. Yeah, so so even though the graph shows uh, uh, that coming down, it doesn't mean that there's less uh, uh, ease of, of money. It's that there's still a growing amount of ease in which the banks are lending. It's like if you said house prices went up 2%, and, and I'm making this up, let's say they went up 2% in September and that they went up 1% in October. You don't say, oh, well, October was very bad because that means that house prices went down. Yeah. No, they didn't go down. They still went up by 1%. It's the growth rate that has gone down and similar here. And look, the last question we said we would answer at the start is uh, how much are banks splashing cash to get your business? So what sort of cash back can you get? Now, I've just got an update from our mortgage advisors. Somewhere between 0.8% to 1% is pretty standard. So what that means is that if you take out a million dollar mortgage, you might get deposited in your account somewhere between $8,000 and $10,000 for you just taking out that mortgage. Now that assumes that you've got at least the 20% deposit, you meet some other criteria, but that's how much cash the banks actually are willing to, to splash out to get your business. It's a lot of money. Again, going back to that investor that I saw yesterday, $5 million, you could get up to 50 grand by just refinancing your mortgage. Do they cap it out though? Do they Probably, say Probably, I would say so. Um, but having said that, um, you could easily just split your mortgages. Yeah, the interesting thing was, I'm pretty sure when there was a lot of cash being splashed out, about that kind of 1%, sometimes there is a cap of like one and a half or $2 million mm. um, that I've seen from different banks. And just remember as well, you do have to stick with that bank for a number of years before uh, refinancing again. So you can't just bounce from bank to bank every year and expect that cash back. And I shared a story recently about how I'm purchasing my first home to live in. And I go to ASB, get my pre-approval. And they said, uh, and I've, I've shared this before, so I think I can say it again. Uh, we're willing to lend you two million bucks. 
And I thought, God, that's enormous. I don't want to take out $2 million. And then they sent me an email. If you do take out they $2 million. They dangled a cash back. Yeah, they did. They said, <laughs> I actually couldn't believe it. It's a lot of money when you say it this way. Um, and they said, we're willing to give you 0.9% cash back. And so that means that if I did take out that $2 million mortgage, it would be 18 grand deposited 18 in the account. Grand. It is an obscene You've already amount of spent money. that 18 grand, haven't you? You've got yourself a new couch now. Oh, do you know what? Angela says to me, <laughs> oh, we could use that to pay our insurance and we should pay it. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, that's boring. Let's just leave it in the bank. How about that? How about we use it as a buffer? <laughs> now, just to be clear, I'm not going to take out $2 million worth of debt because that's a lot of money. Well, even for the, even for the 18 grand. Well, you know, <laughs> you, you get $2 million into debt, we give you 18 grand, swings it around the pounds. <laughs> and in terms of what else is going on, of course, inflation has fallen down to 2.2%. That happened after the Reserve Bank's most recent OCR announcement. We've got another OCR announcement at the end of November. Economists are kind of split between whether we're going to see a 0.5% cut, some people saying 0.75% cut. So maybe we'll see some more movement either in the lead up to that OCR announcement or, or somewhat you know, directly after. Uh, the main thing that I'm going to be looking out for is are we seeing those long-term rates staying the same and just the swing in those shorter-term rates? And so those are the three things we've covered off. How far are banks secretly cutting their interest rates behind the scenes? Uh, which rates are banks actually cutting? Which is staying the same? And also how much cash are banks splashing out just to get your business? Right, let's wrap it up there. But please don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. It really does help us get the message out to more people. If you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you want to see our faces, you want to see the graphs, uh, just Google Opus Partners YouTube. It'll be the first thing that comes up. If you're on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We release new videos on here every Monday and Wednesday. Thanks for listening to the Property Academy Podcast. I'm your host, Steve McKnight. And I'm Andrew Nichols. We're going to be back again tomorrow with even more daily strategies, tactics, and insights to help you get the most out of the New Zealand property market. Until next time.